setting off in the ES300 hybrid. So I've already done an ES350 V6 video. So if you want all the details on this latest generation, check that out. However, I wanted to drive the hybrid version because there is a massive sense of refinement and luxury from this new car that the hybrid might actually improve upon because it is quieter. You don't hear the engine as much. And when you're in EV mode, crawling in traffic, it's amazing. So. I'm gonna get into more of the driving impressions, but first we need to cover the interior and the body structure. The interior space, this is fully loaded. This is the ultra luxury trim, and this has like the baseball glove interior. And so let's talk about that. Take a look at all the diversity of materials. And you hear me talk about this all the time, like a broken record, but when you see the brown plastics, the digital plastic wood trim, the brown leather, the cross stitching, the alloys in the door handles, the steering wheel design, the upper dash textures, and then you have this plastic that is matte that has this machined look and feel to it like it's machined alloy or metal. And the volume and the volume knob and the tuning knob and then the center console area with the plastic. Again, it's more of this matte machine plastic the speaker grills are alloy. There is no use of glossy black plastic anywhere in this interior space. They've figured out how to make an interior look good without having to resort to the gimmicks of shiny black plastic. And this is one of the best interiors that you're gonna find in an entry level luxury car. It's so well thought out. This feels like a luxury, I mean, this feels like a $100,000 car like 10 years ago. You would be like, this is well worth over $100,000. That's how much they've moved this up market in terms of sound isolation, sound deadening. And it is enormous on the interior. Literally, there's no way that you're not gonna fit in here. The front seat room is huge and I've had big people in here. The back seat space, there's absolutely no issue. The trunk is pretty big. You feel, very comfortable. The sight lines are still good in here. They haven't reduced the glass to the point of where you have to rely on electronics. This is going to be for a very specific demographic of person that wants a very cushy, softer, more quiet, sedate ride. This is not sporty in any manner. So let's talk about the other parts of the interior. This is definitely one of the quieter cars you're going to get into, specifically with the hybrid version. The next part is you want to talk about audio. This is a luxury car. The optional $2,900 Mark Levinson audio system is one of the best Harman Kardon setups we've ever tested. Now, Harman Kardon owns a lot of brands, and then Samsung now owns them. And typically with Harman systems, there's this sound signature to all of them. They feel, how do I put this? just as good as they possibly could do with the amount of money they were paid to do it. Where this feels like everything was thought out. And the test results show that harmonic distortion is low, your frequency response, which in some models you will see these spikes, this huge decibel swing where you can tell between different frequency ranges, it goes up and down and there, it gets real jagged. Plus or 20, 20 decibels in some case, you don't have this here. So what you get is a very clean, neutral sound that is enjoyable and pleasing to listen to. So that $2,900 price tag may seem like a lot, but it's a value in this segment when you look at a lot of the competition. So if you love music, you're gonna like that in here. It's definitely a worthy upgrade and it was a great job by Harman in this case. Everything else in terms of the interior space, top notch. Top notch overall. The only gripe I have is some of the center stack stuff with the buttons and knobs. Like some things are too small for me and kind of how they separate. It takes a little bit to work on to figure out where everything's at, but you don't typically have to rely on the touch screen either to get in and out of things. Now, while the graphic design is way better than it used to be, they still rely on their mouse pad or touch pad interface, which to me, I have to use my thumb. I keep my hand on the right side of the center console and use my thumb to get around. And then I just turn the screen off because usability wise, it's way too much when you're driving. But aside from the inf infotainment, this is one of the best Lexus products that they've ever made. And I'm not even, I'm not even trying to pound smoke up your ass on that. This is a great job. Now, let's get into the body structure. 
When you look at this underneath, much like we did the other ES, Lexus did a great job at covering up the underbody while still making it easy to service. And they haven't put too much money or trying to spend too much money in extensive use of, there's no aluminum really underneath. They don't have these forged aluminum pieces. They don't have adaptive dampers here. They don't have air ride. All the things that are gonna cost you money in the long haul, this is as basic as you can get while still maintaining the ease of reliability, hybrid system aside. And it's just such a quality package if you're looking for this type of car. So let's get on to the most important thing with the hybrid version. You can hear me creeping along right now. I'm in pure EV mode, and this is where this thing is in better than the V6 version because you feel like you're in your own like time capsule, your own privacy pod. It is so quiet and so refined that I understand why people are just want EV cars for luxury cars now. This makes total sense here, and there's nothing wrong with the V6. It's one of the best V6 like sedans you can get, but with the hybrid, you get that it matches more the personality of what the ES is trying to be. And this is one of the first cars I've driven in this kind of segment where I would almost prefer the hybrid setup over the the standard V6. The other huge advantage to the hybrid setup is, of course, the fuel economy. Even really romping this thing around, I never dip below 35 miles per gallon, ever, <laughs> ever. And that's that is a huge draw and i know fuel prices are low and they can go swing swing to high but it's nice not to constantly have to fill this thing up and that's another reason why i would choose the hybrid setup over the gasoline version and you know it's toyota's hybrid system it's not something that is esoteric or strange it's proven so i feel really comfortable in recommending that part of it but again much like the v6 version of this car i'm been extremely happy driving this and it is a boring car i'm not gonna lie this is not there's really no excitement to this and that's not why you buy it you don't go to a dealership and oh i think i'm gonna have an es today and i'm i'm really i'm i'm jonesing for some some flair in my life let's get into the final thoughts and sum up the pros and cons Final thoughts on the Lexus ES300H. I said this about the Honda Accord. It's the right car at the wrong time. Given the political climate, given the financial market, given the gas prices being so low in the United States, people will choose a large SUV or CUV over a sedan nine out of 10 times or getting close to that point. And there's really no reason for it. This is one of the best sedans I've ever been in, in the modern age. It shows you how good cars have gotten. And does any of that matter? I don't know. To the person that is looking for a sedan, all I have to say is you're gonna love this thing. If you're the right demographic, the right age, and you have the, the financial wherewithal to buy this for around 52,000, fully loaded, mind you, Levinson audio, the fancy pants interior, all that, it's great. It really is. Now the hybrid drivetrain is much different in terms of the personality than the V6. I would say get the V6. However, for the character of the ES, this feels far more refined. It's more quiet when you're in EV mode. You get better fuel efficiency. Is it as fast? No. Is it as fun to drive? No, but that's not what this car is about. Talked about it on the drive segment. Let's get into the negatives, which I didn't talk about too much because I really like this thing. The interior, specifically the way this is laid out. The plasty, digi, fake wood trim. Not a big fan of it. And you can see at a certain point where you get past that bamboo look on the corners of it, it looks, it just basically, the pattern cuts off, it's a big chunk of plastic. I think it's cheesy. But again, you don't have to choose this. The infotainment. The touchpad. What else can I say? I complain about it all the time. They're getting better in the graphical user interface. They've added a larger screen, better resolution. There's some backlight bleed in it, but it's not horrible that way, but the infotainment definitely needs a rework, including the controller interface. The doors feel huge. And if and I talked about this on the other ES video, if you're a shorter person or you're a little bit older and you can't bend as much, those driver doors swing out really far. It's one of those things you need to look at when you test drive it to make sure you can get at it or have a, a little claw to close and open the door for you when you get in. And there's other things like the exterior look 
Now, granted, this looks pretty good in this red paint, but Jack and other people have pointed out they fucking hate the grill on this. This doesn't bother me as much as like their SUVs or like the GX460 I just did. This isn't as bad, but I know people get really triggered by it. It looks like the Predator face. So again, looks is subjective. Some of the interior tech isn't the greatest, um, but it's an amazing car. And I'm gonna leave it at that. If you get a chance to test drive this, please do. Thanks for watching this. I'll see you next time.